It's Wednesday. It's nine o'clock. I'm Chris. I'm Daz. And I'm Martin. Daz, it's Loaded Football. Run the intros. Hey, what do you speed that that up? We had a, we had a nice little uh, quick <laughs> intro there, didn't we? I like that. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are, I hope I hope you enjoyed the show this evening. A lot of effort's gone in this week. We're on show number three. So we're hoping it's going to be a little bit smoother than last week. But if not, I hope you enjoy it anyway for a few laughs. So the first thing that I just want to say before we kick off the show is that obviously tonight we've got a few Premier League games live at the moment. So at the moment it is Leeds at home to Everton and Everton are currently winning 2-1. We've also got Aston Villa at home to West Ham and it's just approaching half time and that's still nil nil. And also it's Liverpool at home to Brighton and that is also nil nil. So I'm going to be keeping you up to date with the scores as always. And now I'm going to pass you to Daz to talk about the questions and comments. Questions and comments. I think it's now it's time for loaded headlines. Okay, the first headline. Uh, what have we got going on this week? Let's talk about transfer deadline day. Transfer deadline day and the, the whole transfer window, the the winter transfer window. Yeah, it was really pretty much the 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 Brexit COVID transfer window. This time, there's 12 permanent deals were completed. Um, it was eight, 84.2 million spent. Uh, down on the 230 million that was spent at the same time last year. The biggest signing was from Man United, the the the, the lad from uh, from Atlanta. And uh, yeah, lads, what what's your thoughts on the transfer window in gen in general? I, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it was always going to be a quiet one. I think January's always. It's a weird window. Do you know what I mean, lads? It's like nobody's really doing too much, and I think COVID is. COVID's probably ruined a lot of it with, um, you know, with money and obviously no fans in the ground. So other than kind of Haller leaving West Ham, um, and I think, Chris, you raised the one about um, your man, William Jose, going into Wolves. There wasn't really too many big ones. There was more. It, it seemed to be kind of 90% of the deal were loan deals. Obviously, yeah. there's a few kind of around the clubs. Um, you know, Liverpool picked up, um, you know, a couple – uh, Newcastle picked up one. You know, there was a few around, but nothing really that stood out um, for me massively. I think um, for me, probably the the interesting ones for me were um, Miles Naitland going to uh, from Arsenal to West Brom. I think that's yeah. a really good capture. Um, I'm surprised that he didn't go elsewhere. Um, William Jose to to um, to Wolves, I think it's a real good one. Chris, you spoke about him a few weeks back. We were talking about him, obviously, for Newcastle. Um, and it and it didn't, it, you know, obviously, he's gone to Wolves. I think that's a really astute sign. And um, the other one for me was was Josh King to Everton for five million. Um, yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm surprised nobody else snapped him up. Um, I, you know, obviously, would have loved to have seen him go further north. But yeah, weird, weird window for me. Um, not, not too many big ones, but no surprises, really, I think, Chris, for you. No, I mean, I suppose, yeah, surprises, you're right. There wasn't really many big ones. I mean, Josh King, you know, right at the death, that that, that was that was probably the coup of the window, to be fair. I mean, to get him for such a low price, I know a lot of clubs were put off because, you know, he, he wanted quite high wages, didn't he? But he's definitely worth a whisk, uh, a whisk. He's definitely worth a risk at five million. <laughs> 100% because, yeah. you know, he, he's, he's proven in Premier League, isn't he? And 5 million these days doesn't get you much, does it? So I, th no, I thought that was a, 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 a really astute deal. Yeah. And also I wanted to mention Liverpool. Uh, they've been praised, you know, for pulling off this clever deal for Kabak. Now, Kabak's a centre-back for Schalke. And I think yeah. he's only young. I think he's only about 20. And Liverpool have agreed this bizarre deal where, you know, I think the loan fee is about 2 million, 2.5 million. And then if they want to sign him permanently at the end of the season, they can for a, approximately 18 million. And I think it rises to 25, 30 million. But if they don't want to, they can just give him back. Yet Schalke, I believe, are at the, the foot of the, you know, the German league, struggling yeah. big time. And they've let one of the, you know, really promising centre-backs go. So That's it's a bit of a funny deal. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Liverpool have got away with it, but cracking deal for Liverpool. Yeah. Um, um, the, obviously, with Josh, with Josh King going to the other side of Merseyside, Chris, is there is there a few in your uh, in your uh, household there that have gone out and bought Josh King jerseys, or what's the story? <laughs> not yet, not yet. I'm sure they will do. Um, yeah, I, I, like I say, I think I think he's going to be uh, you know a popular a popular um, player with the fans because you know at the moment really up up top they've only got Dominic Calvert Lewin, uh, and I believe I'm, I'm right in thinking did Tosin go out on loan? I could be wrong. But I thought Tosin might have gone out on loan. But if he if he He's hasn't, anyway, yeah, yeah, I think he did, didn't he? But yeah, the, I think he was he was tip to go. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't really get a look in anyway. Tosin does he? So Josh King, no. you know, that's it's a fantastic option for Devon, isn't it? So I think, it, I think yeah, I think it'll bring him goals because I don't think you're guaranteed yeah. it with Richardson. Um, you know, and he's he's had a couple of injuries, and I think he he can he can be a bit prone to a dodgy tackle as well. Um, yeah. So you, you 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 know he's he's quite prone to a yellow on the odd red. So I think Josh King. Josh King will bring goals for Everton, I think. Um, I think yeah. in the setup and with the likes of Hammers in, in the middle and stuff, um, I think you know that 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 could turn out to be one of the second half season signings for me. Yeah, another one that, that happened as well, uh, kind of a bit under the radar, just on the the, the deadline day, is uh, Minamino going from Liverpool to yeah. Southampton and on as well. I was surprised at that one, and I'm surprised a few more didn't look at him as well. Like, um, and of course, Willock Willock uh, has turned up at Newcastle, so. Hopefully he can do the business first <laughs> with, with the Edling going and and uh, and bring it in. Uh, well, we, we didn't need to. to the, we still have a, an, an empty squad space left because we don't have to register him because he's young enough. But um, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I seen a good one there on Twitter today, which was a picture of Willock and a picture of Bruce, and they just said Willock and Pillock, which I thought was <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, was was absolute quality. So whoever whoever put that together and uh, whacked that out on Twitter, <laughs> fair play to you. It was uh, it was really good. That's. I think we'll move on. I think we'll move on to our next one, which is the surprise results from yesterday. So I'm just going to flash them up on screen for everybody. Yeah, we'll, we'll look. We'll, maybe we'll look at these uh, one by one here um, and s- see what you think. So let, let's let's look to the first one, I suppose, and let's look at uh, Sheffield United getting uh, a victory over West Brom, a, a real six pointer battle there. If uh, if Sheffield United didn't get get something from that. They were really cut adrift. So now it's nicely grouped down there at the bottom, and hopefully those three stay there together, huddled. Uh, I'd be happy with that. But uh, what do you make of it? I, I, I'll just I'll, my, I'll give my own thoughts first. Yeah, I just uh, saw it's kind of the, 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 a few of the goals back. Um, suppose the big games coming up for the, the next. The Sheffield United play Chelsea, and West Brom play Spurs. So it's it's a good one for Sheffield United to, to get those points. Uh, and they came back from one 0 down to to, to win two one. So. Fair play, Tim. Yeah, for me, um, yeah, they're kind, they're kind of, they're sneaking a couple of results. Sheffield United, I'd be slightly worried about them. Um, obviously, they've had a stinking half season, I guess, but they've picked up, they've picked up two or three now. Um, I think they're there on eleven points in the table. So yeah, you're right, Daz. It, it is, it's, it's massively starting to bunch up. But um, you know, there's a there's a, there's a piece there that obviously, you know, two or three of them are getting different wins, different weeks, and they're kind of leapfrogging. So I, w- I wouldn't be at all all surprised um, to see Sheffield United maybe climb up a bit. I think West Brom are kind of faltering. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight for me. But look, it's a great result for for the Blades. Yeah, fantastic results. And do you know what? It makes the league a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? Because as Daz said, you know, they would have been cut adrift had West Brom won. And obviously from a Newcastle point of view, which, you know, I, I will always, always have, I'm, I'm pleased that Sheffield United won because it just means that, you know, West Brom aren't, you know, teetering towards getting out of that bottom three. Now, you know, with Sheffield United winning, it just keeps West Brom and Sheffield United, you know, close together. I think Sheffield United are on 11, West Brom are on 12, and then you've got Fulham on 14. And then you've got above them directly is Burnley, who are on 20, uh, 22. So, you know, there's a healthy little eight point gap there. So mm. it, it works out well, you know, in terms of being a Newcastle fan anyway. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. let's move on to the next one, which was uh, Wolves and Arsenal. So this was a strange one. Uh, two one. I just flick up the scores everyone again. Two one here for 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 Wolves. Um, yeah, and I, again I, I flick back at the the just the goals really and the sendings off. <laughs> the first one for me uh, wasn't a red card for Luis. Um, he was unlucky to get sent off, and uh, the, <laughs> the what was Lino doing with uh, with punching the ball outside the box? Uh, he, he deserved the red card there. Um, yeah, it's yeah, a good win for Wolves, really. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I didn't actually watch it last night because obviously we were watching other things, but um, I watched the kind of highlights back this morning, I suppose, you know, the top of my head. I watched, I watched uh, Leno, I was kind of like, what the fuck is he at? What's he doing? <laughs> like, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, well, Wolves again, like... Do you know what? Wolves could be dragged into this relegation piece because their results have been up and down. So they're not, uh, no, nobody's really talking about Wolves. Um, but their season has been up and down for me. And they could, depending on results, on the, the run into their season, they could get, you know, with the with the likes of Newcastle, with Burnley, Wolves, and a few other, few around them, they could get dragged into that, that kind of fight to stay out of the three, you know? They're missing him and bit big time. I suppose he hit the, yeah, the bad yeah, yeah. injury, like so. Yeah, he was yeah. the main play goals. Yeah, they've still, they've still got some quality players, though, Daz. Yeah, they do. So you, you wonder what's going on with them. Yeah. Do you know what, boys? I think Wolves and Arsenal, especially this season, are probably two of the most unpredictable teams. I mean, you know, Arsenal can go go out there and perform and play really well, you know, pick up three points where perhaps you wouldn't necessarily think they could. And I feel Wolves are exactly the same. And I, you know, f- certainly from a betting point of view, I, I couldn't I couldn't pick which team would win yesterday because yeah. it, it is one of those one of those games where you literally couldn't predict it. And when I saw what Arsenal went one nil up, I thought so, you know, Arsenal yeah, will yeah. kick on now. And then, yeah. you know, th- that happens to them and then Wolves go and win two one. But yeah, I completely agree with you, Marty. I, I think Wolves could quite easily be sucked into it. Um, I, I, as I've already said this season, you know, I think the teams 17th and above are extremely lucky that the three bottom teams at Pleasance are so weak because you know they they, they are consistently losing games. Yeah. And, you a, know, a, not a couple pick, of shock results also brings you into it, though, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It does. You I mean, William I mean? two two odd wins, and yeah, you know, you're, I mean, you're right this, in it. If this William Jose, it's the ground running. You know, wolves. Wolves could get back up up there, couldn't yeah, they? And then they've yeah. obviously got Adama Traore, who you know was very hit and miss, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's move on to yeah. the next one, lads, which was the big one of the night. <laughs> the, the nine nil, um, Man United nine, Southampton nil. Massive, massive result there. Um, two red cards in in that match as well. Uh, the first one was a very bad tackle. Uh, when I was looking back on it, and the second one was it was professional foul just to kind of just drop another goal in, goal in. Uh, but Southampton, they're they're totally depleted. Um, uh, they're luckily enough we play them next, as in Newcastle. Uh, but they they have about twelve players missing between injuries and suspensions and everything. Uh, and of course, um, it's not the first time um, Southampton have gotten gotten a hammering on the last ship line. No, <laughs> no. Um... Yeah, again, I watched the highlights this morning. Um, you know, not, none of the, none of the Man United goals were really special. Um, you know, they took their goals and took their chances. Uh, you know, I, I think every now and again you get one of these blip games that you get like a, a seven or an eight niller, and you're kind of looking at it going, Jesus Christ, what happened? You know, and it just so happens that Man United have had a couple. Obviously, Southampton, you know, two within within you know, I think kind of 12, 13 months of each other. So obviously, it's it's a it's a kick for them um but look man united took their chances um you know but I, I don't think i think the goals went in but i don't you know on another on another night some of those don't go in do you know what i mean yeah, like it's yeah. just one of the, it was just one of those nights um but look you, you know you've got to take your chances you've got to put them away and, and obviously you know man united are on a good run they put nine newcastle have southampton next at home so depleted squad, you know, hopefully you'd like it to play to your hands, but who's to know? But yeah, freak freak result, I think. But obviously if you're Southampton, um, and I suppose anyone that's watching, and I'll just give a quick, quick shout out because I am, along with Daz, I've got the questions and bits coming in here. So a couple of shout outs to the likes of Mike Gent, Julie Baker, um, Skullfist, a few others who are firing up questions. First of all, thanks for watching. I know most of you guys are regulars, so fair play to you for coming back. Um, quick one for those who are watching, throw it up in the comments. 
Who have been the managers for the last couple of 9 nil wins? So obviously you've got Ole last night. United put, I think, they put nine past Southampton last time, was it? Last, last time, yeah. Last time. So who, who was the Man United manager at that occasion? And is there anybody else in the Premier League over the last while has put nine past somebody? And who were the managers? I, I've I've said I think Ferguson was one of the managers for Man United. Obviously, Ole last night. Not sure. We think Spurs maybe put nine past somebody. Um, Chris, I think you think you said Defoe scored. I think Defoe five. got five. Yeah. I think so if, so. if you do know, yeah, if you do know, get it on the questions there. Get it back to us um, and let us know who who were the last teams to whack away nine and uh, who who were the managers. Whether let us know whether we were right or wrong. Grand lads. Um, okay, then the, the last the last result of the night then was was the uh, Newcastle Palace one, and I bought myself and you, Chris, were were on Match Day Live yesterday with Steve. Um, well, yeah, I thought that they played well. Okay, we lost, but we, we had a lot of the ball, which we weren't used to. Yeah. And uh, I think I went for Fraser's man of the match. And you, you went for for Hayden, and uh, Hayden was my other my other player there. But uh, no, uh, look, it's, we just got unlucky on the night. We didn't we didn't put the ball in the back of the net. Um, and it's it's good. Uh, it was a good performance. I think Southampton is 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 key for us uh, coming up at the weekend. Absolutely, Davs. Do you know what we? I, I, I kept. I, I, I felt like a bit of a black sheep last night because I, I, I wasn't um, majorly annoyed. You know, at the, at, you know, at losing. Don't get me wrong. No one likes to lose, but at the end of the day, the way I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, you know, we've actually put in a half decent performance there, and compared to the dross that we've been watching for the past four, five, six weeks. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. without watching to watch, we were in the game. Oh, have you got a question up there? Yeah, we have a question. Uh, yeah. What's what's everyone's thoughts on um, Messi's contract leak and the figures that were mentioned? Oh. Um, I, I, I'll i be honest with you. When I first seen it, I had to actually work out how many fucking zeros were in it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's... it's Unreal. If that is, if that is true, um, I think two things for me. Whoever within the club leaked that, if it wasn't Messi himself or somebody within his own camp needs to be shot out the door at Barcelona. Um, I think that's one thing. Secondly, I still don't ever see Messi wearing another jersey other than Barcelona. I think it's it's the normal kind of thing with Barcelona, the likes of Madrid, but these big stars, the likes of Messi, the likes of Ronaldo when he was there at Real Madrid, they kind of leak these little contract bits and, oh, Messi's thinking about leaving and this, that, and the other. But a lot of it is to kind of oust the current chairman or the current, you know, head of of the tree, I suppose, in 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 a lot of the big La Liga clubs, um, in particularly when they're fan owned, the likes of Barcelona is fan owned to a degree. So I think whoever in the club leaked that out, if it was a club internal, I think should be shot out of a gate very rapidly. Um, but look, I mean, from a point of being a footballer, look, Messi is is one of the world's greatest um, alongside Ronaldo. So if somebody said to me, listen. Here's a contract for 500 million. Would I knock it back and be worried about a leak in the press? I wouldn't give a shit. If I'm taking, if I'm taking home that money, do you know what? You can leak, you know, whatever you want in the papers, lads, because I'm enjoying the lifestyle and doing whatever I want. So yeah, look, it is what it is. But you know, I, I think a, a, a lot of the a lot of the Spanish clubs, in particular the big clubs, are, are under severe financial pressure. And I think a good comment there about if the clubs ever recalled their debts, some of these clubs are in big trouble, big yeah. big trouble. I mean, Barca, Mart, you know, Barca are apparently on the on the verge of uh, going bankrupt, aren't they? And if you're paying wages like that to one player, it's no yeah. surprise. I mean, obviously, Messi, you know, arguably is is one of, or if not the best player in the world at the moment. But you yeah. know, you can't. It, how how can you sustain paying someone that much money? It's just it's it's absolutely bizarre. And obviously, the new camp fills what 120 thousand a week. They're going to be missing them gate receipts, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Maybe we, we need to, we need to get on to Messi and ask him does he uh, does he want to pip the Saudis? <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> point. That's, uh, Julie came back to us. Um, uh, I said less to Julie, uh, yeah. and I, I agree with Julie's answer here as well. And the manager is what I said off air. Uh, Brennan Rogers. Rogers. Okay. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Uh, mm -hmm. That's from Mike. Ninety-five. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Ninety-five. Yeah. Okay. That must have been yeah. Ferguson then. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Andy, Andy Cole? Was Andy Cole still playing then? 
Uh, yes. He would have been yeah. in that United been, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was 95 because Shearer come, Shearer come 95, 96. And Cole... Yeah, yeah maybe Cole it wasn't. Left, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Yeah, that, let's move along. That. Yeah, let's, let's go to... Are you ready, Chris? I'm ready. Loaded leaderboard. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this section. Do you oh, know what it is? I, I, uh, it gets better every week. I have to say, I that like our voiceovers are the bit of the show I enjoy the most. I have to say because it's just definitely you never know what's gonna you never know what's gonna come out. No, should I display no. the leaderboard? Do you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so you the leaderboard. Throw it up. Throw it up. Do you think no, so? actually, let's leave it, it off. Let's leave it off. Put it up. Let's put it up. It's, put it up. it's, it's my work. section. I want you to put it up. Oh, hey! Here we go. Hey, uh, you know what? It's not over. It's not over, but... Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, hang what, on. What, yeah, hang on. It's, my, it's about... my section, and I'm top. How's that working? <laughs> what's it, what did they say about cream rising to the top or something? Yeah, what I was, I was at the bottom last week. I wasn't worried. Yeah. Bottom last week. I'd say I'd say it's not just Messi's figures that are being fuddled with. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> Mind an extra zero here and there, lads. <laughs> let's look at the fixtures, lads. And Chris, do you want to talk us oh, through? Oh, yeah, let's rattle through them. God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk you through. Right, okay, boys. So where am I gonna pick my points up this week? Okay, so we're starting with Tottenham at home to Chelsea, which is tomorrow. So I'm going to say a Tottenham home I'm gonna say a draw here, Chris. I'm gonna go okay. I'm, I'm gonna go Chelsea. Ooh, okay. So on Saturday we have Aston Villa at home to Arsenal, and I am going to say Aston Villa win. And I'm also saying Villa. Uh, oh, I'm gonna Daz? I'm gonna book the trend. I'm going Arsenal. Mars, you're you're doing what you were doing <laughs> last week. It got it got you to the top of the board, lad. Right. I don't know. Hey, Mars, it might work. It might work. Okay. So next one we've got is Burnley at home to Brighton. Ooh, this is a toughie. I'm gonna say and I'm draw. Up. I'm also Daz? gonna say a draw, Chris. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going Mars Burnley. Say home win. <laughs> There it is. Good man. Okay, we've then got Newcastle at home to Southampton. And after the last two performances, I'm going to say Newcastle home win. What about you, Daz? I'm with you all the way. Newcastle home win here, especially with them missing potentially 12 players. Yeah. I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to go draw. Well, well, well. Are you doing okay. that match day live? I am doing that Do match day live, yes. Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying something else. No, I was I was just going to say, actually, while I've just got a second, I'm just going to say, I am following the games, boys, but honestly, there's been no goals. I've not missed any cards or anything like that. It's literally gone quiet. We've only got one more minute left in the Leeds-Everton game. That's still 2-1 to Everton, so it looks like they're going to hang on. Aston Villa is still nil-nil at home to West Ham, and Liverpool are still nil-nil at home to Brighton. So I just thought I'd let you all know that. Yeah. Okay, so the next game that we've got is Fulham are at home to West Ham, and I am going to say a West Ham win. And I am also saying a West Ham win. I'm not copying you, Chris, but that's the one I've picked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that's that, that's the right call, lads. I'll go with that West Ham win. Okay, fantastic. And the last one we've got on Saturday is Man United at home to Everton, and I am going for a Man United home win. A Man United home win for me as well. Uh, I'm gonna go draw. Goal! Goal! Oh! There's been a goal oh. at Upton Park. Oh, tell a lie. No, there's been a goal. I might have given away. There's been a goal at Villa Park. There's been a goal at Villa Park. Well, it's just flashed through, but I'm okay. still waiting for it. But apparently, West Ham have scored. Ooh. I'm awaiting official confirmation on who scored, but West Ham have scored. In fact, that leads okay. me nicely on to a transfer that we forgot earlier, lads. Do you remember West Ham signed Jesse Lingard on loan? That was an interesting one, That's wasn't right. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he'll do well for them. Yeah, big he just needs game time. Jesse. Yeah, and, he, and, he, and, and, and I think the fact that he won't be in the changing room with Pogba and they won't be dancing on holiday, singing about beans, then I think he'll do all right. Yeah, I agree, mate. And interestingly enough, the goal machine, Thomas Suchek, Scored the goal. Ooh, no, Can't stop scoring. Is it a good one for fantasy football? I had oh, him in my fantasy football team at the start of the season. I took him out. And he hasn't oh. stopped scoring since. No way. Uh, also, another bit of breaking news, lads. I I'm, I'm see Phil in the green room sweating. He has books in front of him. You, you can't see him. Uh, I can see him. 
he, he, right. so we need to wrap this with these we'll, scores, boys. We'll let's get, these, let's get them out of the way. Get him in his misery. We'll speed it up. Sorry, Phil. We won't be a second, mate. Okay, so we've got Spurs at home to West Brom. I'm going Spurs home win. Daz? Spurs as well, Chris. Is boy surprise? <laughs> See, I think this could be a funny one. I'm going to... Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, Spurs. Okay, Spurs win. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go West Brom, man, but anyway, yeah. Man. Spurs. We need, Spurs, we need the yeah. Spurs win. We do, yeah. Spurs, okay. Next one, Wolves. Wolves at home to Leicester. I'm going to say a Leicester away win. Leicester for me as well. Draw. Come on, Daz. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Okay. I, I, oh, I'm this is going to be this is going to be controversial one. Okay, we've got <laughs> Liverpool at home to Man City. I'm going to say Man City win. Oh, that's your wind is getting put out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying a draw here, Chris. Oh, okay, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going Man City win because City are on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just to let you know, by the way, guys, full time Everton have beaten Leeds 2 1. Okay, so next game, we've got Sheffield United at home to Chelsea. I'm going to say Chelsea win. I'm saying yeah. Chelsea win as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Chelsea win. Okay, and the last game, which is looks like a tough one, Leeds at home to Palace. I'm going to say draw. And I'm saying a Leeds win there. Yeah, I'm going right. for a lead, lead, Leeds win for me as well, please. Okay, lads, fantastic. Okay. Good luck. Great. Good luck. Uh, yeah, next hopefully you're bottom of the table uh, ne next week again, Chris. Uh, okay, so <laughs> on, on to the next section. Are you ready, Martin? I am ready, Daz. Loaded tune. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll tell you. Love that. So, shall we bring Phil on? Let's bring Goal. him on. Go. Oh, no. Let's, let, let, oh, let's, let's, let's bring, bring him, him on, on anyway. Bring him on, on for the goal. Bring him on for the goal. Welcome, yeah. Phil. Hey. Oh, wow. There he is, lads. <laughs> right. Chris, give, give, give us your update first, Chris. You're going to love this, boys. Liverpool have gone 1 0 down against Brighton. Oh. oh. Well, I'm saying oh, we're going to love it. We don't love that at all, being new oh, Newcastle yeah, fans. Yeah, no, like you, you're, you've already lost two windows. Let's not get any more smashed. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, so live, uh, Brighton are 1 0 up against Liverpool. Very good. Cool, cool. Very good. Well, right. Well, so, this is, yeah, this is my bit. So, obviously, last couple of weeks you've seen on Lord of Football, we've kind of started banging out a few tunes. Um, and I've had the, the great. Um, opportunity to start having a bit of banter and a bit of crack with some bands. We put out a tweet a while back to say, if you want to get your music, if you're up and coming, you want to get your tune out and load of football, get in touch. And luckily enough, um, Phil, who got in touch with us, um, and we've had a bit, of, a bit of conversation going backwards and forwards, said, listen, lads, um, I know you guys are really amateurish, but I've got a cracking tune, <laughs> and I'd love, to, I'd love to come on and um, get, get my tune out there. So, uh, PG Chaletta, is that right? Am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah, that's my stage name. That's my moniker. So PG Chaletta. Okay. Um, obviously, my name's Phil. So um, okay. when I was starting out, people, I think people got a bit confused by that. They were always looking for Phil Chaletta, but so I was like, no, no, it's PG Chaletta. So PG Chaletta. Yeah, because I seen the name and then I heard you speak, and I was like, oh, what the fuck, lads? Hang on. I've got the I've got the wrong one. Hang on. So, obviously, you sent us in a bit of a bio. So, just for those who are watching, uh, Phil is from the, the, the seaside town of Kikuddy in Fife, is a, a, an East Fife supporter. And I, Chris, as part of the Lord of Queers, you've got some good East Fife um, quizzes. A big shout out to East Fife. Oh, the pressure's um, on. Pressure is on. Um, Phil's music is based on humble past experiences and observations. So, um, you know, there is some good tunes in there. And music, which I really love this bit, which is it's music that enables the listener to forget about the nine to five, which <laughs> in the current COVID, I'll be honest, like I've got a job, but I forget about the nine to five most of the days because I've got three young kids so I don't get time to work. But um, it was really good. Two singles, The Sesh, which we're going to have a bit of a tune of and play of later on, came out in August. And then you've the new tune, Chancer, came out in November. So first and foremost, obviously, we, we did say earlier on, but welcome to the show, Phil. Welcome to Loaded Football. 
Um, and I suppose my first question to you is, why East Fife and how are they doing and how often do you get there? Yeah, so obviously I'll just say thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, obviously we're having banter back and forth on Twitter, so thanks to come in for a chat. And just because uh, I, I think there was a, a possible myth that this was a, a made-up club, so just to put that to bed, I've got, <laughs> I've got uh, this is the top here. Well, there, there it is. There he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love it, mate. Yeah, they're, they're in Scotland, right? Yeah, just, I'm just yeah. guessing. From that year. <laughs> so um, it just came about fun enough. My dad, I, I well. To be honest, with Scottish football is dominated by Celtic and Rangers. Like the bulk of the country are either Celtic Rangers fans with Hibs Hearts. But my dad was from, um, you know, from Kirkcaldy in, is in Fife. There's other seaside towns called uh, Leaven and, and Methil. So my dad was from Leaven, which is close to Methil, um, and he just supported these Fife. So he took me there as a as a baby, um, and I'm talking like down to Berwick to watch these Fife. So that's like two hour journey. Um, Cried the full game because the football was that beautiful, but um, that's really where the where the where the love came there. You know, I, I just watched them as a as a young boy, um, and it and it stayed stayed ever since. Um, in terms of how they're doing, so the league they're in is it's Scottish League One, so it's it's the third third tier, um, and it's a hybrid league. So you'll have some you know clubs in Scotland that are full time. So there's three teams in there that are full time. You've got um, Falkirk. Partick Thistle and Airdrie and the rest of the teams are are part time, and um, so it's a very very competitive and tough league. Um, and he, they're sitting mid table at the moment. They've they've always been, you know, if you get a fourth place finish, you get a you get a playoff. So again, there, there always seems to be around about fifth place. Um, so as you see now, they're at six. But again, if you look yeah. from four downwards, I would say. You know, look how many points are in it between the teams. It's it's really tight and competitive. And I think once you get I think Partick Thistle are on a bit of a, a bad run, so I'd say they're maybe in a false position. But if you look at Falkirk, Cove are big spenders. Um, if you look, if you go away from Falkirk, Partick and Cove, I'd say the rest of the teams are all evenly matched. So, again, it's very, very difficult um, to, to get yourself out of that league. Um, and you could easily find yourself at the bottom and potentially going down a level as well. Just, sorry, uh, Phil, is it one or two teams that gets promoted? Yeah, so it used it used to be the top two went up um, okay. and the league decided, you know what, we're going to try and spice things up here. So what happens is, so if, if all things remain the same, ballpark <laughs> automatically get promoted to the next tier and the teams yeah. that finish second, third and fourth go into the playoffs. Um, and then the league above, the team that finishes bottom they go, they they're relegated straight away. But the team that finishes second bottom are in the playoffs with the with the three teams from uh, places two, three, and four in the lower tier. Tricky. That's how it's decided. It's going to we'll go. Keep an eye on that. Just yeah, so exactly. Not, yeah. Just going to go. What? Okay. So. Thank you, Daz. So it's now two 0 to West Ham, and that man Jesse Lingard scored. Oh, on a debut. Lingard. Yeah. So West Ham are two 0 <clears> up <throat> away to Villa. <laughs> Yeah, say do well I'm wrong. Yeah, exactly. So obviously away from football, you're obviously um singer songwriter. So from your perspective, give us the lowdown on the music. How did you get into it? You know, is there music in the family? You know, what's what's I suppose, you know, where are things at now for yourself, Phil? And you know, what's what's the aim? How are you covering things off in COVID? You know, how are you getting the tunes out? I'm presuming it's like this, social media pods and stuff like that. But obviously, you know, how how is it affecting you with regards to getting out getting out on the road and doing stuff like that? So where, where are you at with all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so my, my musical background comes from, I'd say, you know, I let my, my father, he, he played guitar. So I, I just wanted to get a guitar when I was like 11, 12 year old. A lot of my cousins um, were into, into music as well. Um, so that, that kind of grew grew from there. Um, again, I kind of studied it at school, and a lot of my friends were in bands and stuff. So I used to go and, and uh, play and, and, and jam about with them. Um, traditionally, what we'd do is I'd you know travel the central belt, and I, I used to play in sort of the pubs and do the standard cover set um, in there. Yeah. But lockdown was a was a big was a big change and opportunity for me. It just gave me the time to. Just to go, you know what? Let's let's go for it. Let's let's write some uh, music. You've had a bit of life experience now. 
and um, you've got plenty of stories you can reflect on and your mates have got plenty of stories you can reflect on so just get them in a bit of paper and um, write relatable and, and catchy songs and and get them out there so up until the point of lockdown that was i think the week of lockdown i was starting to get into the you know the smaller venues i was about to play a gig um and then lockdown happened and, and obviously yeah. we been stuck with with virtual gigs um a lot of social media. I've even found myself on TikTok now. <laughs> just <putting money. laughs> like just to... Don't worry, we won't we won't share any of that. <laughs> yeah. Can you to... do a sea a sea shanty for us or anything like that? No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I've just all you can really do now is go in the social media streams and uh, keep your keep your profile up there, try and attract uh, new new followers. Keep writing music and um, play a couple of live streams here and there. I got. Lucky when when the restrictions you know relax slightly um, in the summer, you know you could go out in the studios and start to record, and you could you know do like live lounges, socially distanced and stuff like that. So it allowed me to get some material then, but obviously now we're back to the square one that you you can't virtually record. Um, so you're really waiting till till that opens uh, opens up again. I've just seen someone said, "Welcome, Phil. How's yep, it going, mate?" There you go. um, so just yeah, that, proves, that, it just proves we are live. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the plan for me. Um, won't get knocked over in a fight, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ignore that guy. Yeah, yeah. Ignore we don't know who that is. He's bad. The good, the good thing is, during that, that period of lockdown, you had time to write a lot of songs. I'm still writing as we go. So the, the plan is now um, the, the sesh. The sesh went out done really well. So in, in Scotland, it was in the top 10 of the official Scottish charts. It managed to get to, to number eight. Um, UK alternative charts, it, it managed to get to, to, to one. So that was a, it was a, it was a good start. But that song really connected wow. with, with a lot of people. Um, yeah. ch- chance are uh, done well, never really hit the, hit the same heights. But again, what I'm finding about my music is the stage I'm at, you know, there's still a lot of people out there that, that haven't listened to it. But when they do yeah. listen to it, you know, they, they love it. So I'm like, if I can get the sound out there, then there's every chance that the sesh can come back out and over like, like the sea yeah. shanty, you never know. Exactly. <laughs> as long as you're not wearing a pair of pants that don't reach your ankles, mate, I'd say you're, you're, you're streaming. <laughs> success. Um, okay, those lads had plenty of hits. Um, but I think with the tune, for me, like, obviously, I, I think there's a couple of things. Like, we, we obviously kind of, you know, we're only in show three. You know, we come off the back of another channel where we do mainly Newcastle stuff and whatever, and... We were kind of looking at it, looking at the lockdown, and we said, you know what, let's just put like a general football show there with a bit of music, a bit of band, and like a soccer AM typey vibe and yeah. whatever else. So obviously I kind of started looking at the music, obviously got the got the mail in from yourself and kind of hit the tune up. And I sent it to Daz and I went, Holy shit balls, this tune, it's like <laughs> it's, it's in my brain. And Daz went, All right, all right, hang on a minute. I know you're looking at bands. This isn't fucking live aid. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no, no, seriously, man. I swear down, you've got to listen to this tune, man. It's really, really good. And about a day later, Daz texted me and said, holy fuck, I can't get that out of my head. I've been playing with the car and everything. Yeah. So it's like, it's a really good tune. So I think, look, I mean, this, this is probably a good <laughs> tune moment, Daz. Do we want to whack um, yeah. the tune on? Let's play the session. What we're going to do, Phil, is we're going we're gonna to play the full song now. If any of the listeners want to get a question into Phil, um, I know Chris and Daz have got some questions. Then we got the quiz. So look. Let's get the tune on. This is um, The Sesh by PG Charletta. Um, let her rock, Daz. This is a massive tune, man. Love it. Come on, The Sesh. Come on, The Sesh.
Yes. Absolutely love that song. Has to be said. And we got people, as soon as that went off, we got people firing stuff in. So I know, Daz, you can probably throw a few up there, can you? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I, I was saving them. I was going to go with my own questions. But let's go with the yeah. viewers' questions first, and then we'll we come back to our uh, questions, Chris. Um, let me see. Comment here. And the question, who are your music influ musical influences, Phil? Um, wide range. Of summarize, I'll summarise a few. So uh, Scottish-wise, I would say you know, Jerry, Jerry Cinnamon, um, a band in Dundee called The View. Um, I love the Stone Roses. Um, I love a bit of Oasis as well. So I could I could list up acts for, for hours and hours, but those are sort of the, the main sort of influences, I would say. Yeah. That's what I listen to a lot. Yeah, I I also get a kind of a bit of uh, Paolo Nettini kind of uh, a vibe off you as well. Yeah, no, I love it. I love Paolo yeah. Nettini as well. Um, um, again, one of the one of the big big Scottish artists. Yeah. So grown up and, in the Dustin Paolo a lot. And linking to what what Mike has said here, it, to me this is this would be the song for, for when lockdown and res restrictions are over. Just everyone back back <laughs> getting to go out and yeah. it, it, that this could be the anthem for, for that if you ask me it'd be perfect for it that's why i was yeah. uh, today i was tweeting the some of the irish radio stations myself and martin are based in in, in ireland i think it'll be it'll go down so well in ireland this june i, I it is i, th I think there's, there's a there's a chunk on it for me like the whole piece of kind of like you know head out on the weekend and like you know i've gone missing for two days like right. i can totally i can totally relate to that before i had kids <laughs> um, you know, two two days and probably longer. But I think you know, Daz. I think you're right. It's one of those like I, you know, that for me is a tune that I know this summer. If if lockdown isn't you know fully over, you know, cranking up a barbecue out the back garden, you know, bag full of cans, music blaring, you know, and that's a tune for me that just it's just a cracking tune. It's just real real vibe to it, and yeah. just you know gets in the head, and you find yourself kind of doing whatever. Um, you know, kind of just really bouncing away to the tune. I mean, me and Daz were dancing there, which doesn't happen very often because my knees yeah, are really. I, it's, a, it's a perfect song for uh, St James's Park game day as well. I think. Exactly. We'll try and pick it up. Although I did see earlier on, I know Daz pushed something out, and we did get a retweet from East Five Football Club. So did we? Oh, yeah, really? we are, finally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fair, fair play to them. Yeah. So we. Yeah, we, they, we they, uh, they put it on their, uh, their social media feed. So. Uh, yeah, oh, they were good when the came out. They 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 retweeted it as uh, oh, as well. So yeah, yes, it's good on his thing. face. Some, two some football of the, clubs we've yeah. got now because because uh, Salford had uh, Salford well had, uh, down to Jason's yeah. Jason's song and everything. But yeah, that two link in with football clubs, cool. And uh, yes, an important question here uh, for you, Phil. Would you take Steve Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> um, I see Steve like. Obviously, observing what's going on from up here, I see he's getting he's going through a hard time, and I seen the and the, I seen the form, um, which doesn't look too good. And to be honest, I think Newcastle have got quite a, a lot of good players in that team. He spent a bit of money, so uh, I think at the moment East Fife's manager's doing okay. So I think we'll, we'll keep this <laughs> yeah. Steve, Steve Bruce can come to the game if he wants, but uh, yeah, we'll stick with our manager now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a polite no, then really, is what you're saying. <laughs> Um, so some of the just a couple of the bits I was watching some of the comments coming in. I know we were throwing up the questions. So John Justin's Allen, who's one of our regulars, says, "Holy uh, quality tune, lads! Me Mrs. Mrs. Q Tech is dancing around the sitting room." Um, Andrew Seaton says, "Class tune." Carl Hope says, "Wow." Julie Baker, love to hear the accent coming through. Glad that we're not hearing the um, yourself trying to make yourself sound American. Um, <laughs> Mike obviously said, who are the influences? And then obviously can't wait to get back on the sesh. Great show so far, guys. Loving the vocals. John Justice, Polo Natini, uh, great, uh, great musical legend, good drinker. So uh, Dave Shepard, quality tune. So listen, everybody out there is is absolutely loving it. So look, it's a, as we said, it's a great tune. So I've, I've probably spoke enough. Um, so I'll open it up to the two boys to fire any questions. And then I think we get on to the quiz because pressure is on. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know. I've got a I've got a quick question for you, Phil. And uh, yeah. you've probably been asked this before, but uh, what what happened to the blonde hair? I see you um, off in the blonde hair in the video. 
the blonde, the blonde hair was a probably a, a moment in uh, the first lockdown finding something to do, so I, I got bleached. So <laughs> now, now reached the point where uh, it's uh, it's grown, it's grown out, and uh, yeah, it's away, it's away. But it, it did look good, I think. So uh, we it could is. get it back. Could get it back. It if I go be- viral, we'll, we'll maybe get it back. We'll see. Yeah, uh, we, we've a player from Newcastle, Joe Linton. He he could uh, he could help you out with that. He could help here, you with a barber, yeah. Here, uh, yeah, very good. Cool. He's, just, he's, he's yeah. the man. Uh, yeah, look, I think it's time, lads, to move on. And yeah, we'll move absolutely. on. Are you ready, Chris? Are you ready? I'm ready. Load the quiz. Yeah. Uh, we go. definitely got to get some vocals. We, we, yeah. we got, there I, must I, be somebody like, out there I watching. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like the good news this week is that we've got rid of all timers. And the sixty yeah. quiz, the sixty second quiz is now a ten minute quiz uh, because uh, that's how long it took last week. So uh, whenever you are ready, Chris and and uh, Phil. Okay, yeah. Phil. So this was titled the sixty second quiz, but now I'm going to be asking you fourteen questions, which are worth a total of fifteen points. So I think the target to beat ten is, is that my yeah. thoughts from last Jace, week. Jace? Jace is currently top, and he's watching this. So he's uh, we, he did actually tweet and say pressure is on Phil. So there you yeah, go. I know I've been I've been giving it big licks on Twitter. So uh, watch me get the wooden spoon here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what, Phil? I'm really pleased because when you were talking a bit a bit about East Fife before, I can tell you're a big fan. So hopefully a lot of these questions won't be won't be any bother to you. But let's yeah, see how I'll you go, go anyway, mate. <laughs> okay. Now uh, I've got to take your first answer as well, Phil. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. So here we go. Question one. <clears throat> Tom's father has three sons. The first two are called 10 and 20. What's the name of the third son? 30. Okay. When was East Fife when was East ah. Fife Football Club founded? Uh, 1903. Oh, he loves it. Loves it. Yeah. Okay. Name the East Fife player whose first name and surname begin with the same letter. I believe there's only one. Oh. <laughs> I could give you a little clue if you yeah, want. Go for it. If it's a bit difficult, mate. Okay, so he's number seven. Uh, number seven. Recent or? Uh, yeah, I think he's the current number seven. This could be another oh. VAR moment, this, couldn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, Danny Denham. There we go. Okay, yeah, well question done. number four. Now, you'll have to listen to this carefully. How many miles in total did the proclaimers say they would walk? <laughs> a, a thousand. <laughs> okay, mate. Okay, and that one was worth... Yeah, now, this one is worth two points, Phil. Okay. So, yeah. what are the first names of the proclaimer brothers? Oh my god. I hope you're all enjoying this Scottish feel to the quiz. You like it? I'm going to, I'm going to go with John and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as. <laughs> okay, mate. Okay. Which soft drink is often described as Scotland's other national drink? Item Brew. Okay. <laughs> Who is the East Fife goalkeeping coach? <laughs> uh, what Lindsay Hamilton. What was that? Sorry, L- Lindsay Hamilton. Okay, East Fife's East Fife Scottish League One game on Saturday is postponed. But who were they due to play, Phil? Four four. Okay, which Scottish singer was listed by Times Magazine in 2010 as the seventh most influential person in the world? Yeah, well. A Scottish singer, and it was 2010, listed by Times Magazine, the seventh most influential person in the world. Scottish singer. Uh, pass. I would have said Rod Stewart, but he's not Scottish, so... <laughs> <laughs> now this one you, you've had a bit of a clue already for this one Phil but as things stand who is top of the Scottish League 1 Falkirk East Fife's current ground is called Bayview Stadium and was opened in 1998 what was the name of the original ground 
Um, studio. Well, it's Bayview. I've only, only ever known it as Bayview. Another another word after Bayview. Commonly called Bayview, Bayview Stadium. Park. Bayview Park. Okay. Who has the record for the most UK number one singles in history? There's no Scottish link here, by the way. <laughs> okay, mate. In which city would you find the Cavern Club? Oh, Liverpool. That was a little link to me there, Phil. I hope you like that. Oh, I've been there. I've been there before. <laughs> and the last one. Johnny Walker is a famous whiskey which originates from Scotland. Can you give me three of the different coloured labels that they do? Uh, it's red, gold and black. Lovely. Well done, mate. OK. Yeah, he knows his drink. <laughs> he knows, he knows. So what I'll, what I'll do, I'll go through the questions and then I'll give you the answers. OK. So, so the first the first question was, Tom's father has three sons. The first two are called 10 and 20. What is the name of the third son? You said 30. Unfortunately, it's Tom. As it's Tom's father, oh. so that was a that was a bit of that was a bit of a tough one, mate. Oh. When was the East uh, When was East Fife Football Club founded? Absolutely spot on. It was 1903. Name the East Fife player whose first name and surname begin with the same letter. You were quite right. It's Danny Denhill. And then when I asked you how many miles in total did the proclaimers uh, say they would walk, you're absolutely right. It was a thousand. By the way, the wife said five thousand. <laughs> and I said, where, where have you got that from? And yeah, so that, that was just that's just totally off topic, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and so with the two points there was what are the first names of the Proclaimer brothers? So the answer was Charlie and Craig. I think you said John and Phil, yeah. was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that I was it. I should know that. I should know that. <laughs> uh, which soft drink is often described as Scotland's other national drink? You're quite right, it's Iron Brew. And who is the East Fife? goalkeeping coach absolutely spot on it's lindsay hamilton east fife's scottish league one game on saturday is postponed who were they due to play now the answer was montrose was it you were unlucky on that one mate yeah, and which yeah. scottish singer was uh, listed by times magazine in 2010 as the seventh most influential person in the world it was susan boyle <laughs> Another Bit of a careful there bit of a careful <clears throat> uh, as things stand who is top of scottish league one you're quite right it was Falkirk. east fife's covenant ground is called bayview stadium and was opened in 1998 what was the name of the original ground you were quite right quite right it was bayview park and who has the record for the most uk number one singles in history it was elvis presley you're close with cliff richards and which city would you find the Cavern Club? You're correct, it was Liverpool. And finally, you absolutely smashed the Johnny Walker question and naming three labels. And yet you could have had blue, gold, green, red, black, or double black. Yeah. So, I colours. <laughs> <laughs> so just to toss up your scores, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But, oh. but don't worry, Phil, we do have <laughs> the bonus question. Would you like to take oh. on the bonus question for five bonus points? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go okay. for it. Okay. Now, this is completely random, Phil. If you get this, mate, so you should I'll be getting about 50 points, to be fair. But, <laughs> and this one fascinated me because I, I, I genuinely was way off the mark with this. Okay, so I'll give you it. If you get it within 30, I'll give you it. So <clears throat> the question is, how many dimples does a British golf ball have? Oh, jeez. I was shocked by it, by the way. And after Phil's had to go, maybe you two lads have a go. I was shocked. Over 200. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yeah. Boys, do you want to, do you want to go advance on that? I'll go, go I'll go 860. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go uh, 450. Okay. Well, to be honest, I, I I was nowhere near. I thought it was much less than that. But the actual answer is 330. Oof. We'd have never got that. No. It's yeah. a golf ball like that. Like a golf ball like that, 330. Unreal. Yeah, but there's, a, there's, a, there's another sub-question to this, which is, which fucking saddle counted that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It wasn't me. Someone told me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, Phil, anyway. so that leaves you on nine points, mate. A very respectful... 
Respectable nine points, by the way. Yeah, well done. Well, 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 well done. Well done, Phil. Yeah. There's some tough okay, questions in there. Tough questions. Yeah. Very good. Was, and these five ones need to match. Yeah. I should have got them on shows. When I seen something, there was something in the day that got posted about a game versus four for that was postponed. So that was my assumption on that question. So we, we have another question for you, Phil. Would you yes. like to stay on? Would you like to stay on with us for the rest of the show? We we, we, we may play your tune again at the end of the show. Um. Yeah, I can stay on for the rest of you. Yeah. Want, like. Yeah. Join in. Join in. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Uh. Well, next we move to loaded eleven. Ooh. So what is this? What is this? So this is a, a new section in the show. What we're going to do is we're going to uh each week we're going to take one position. And uh, in in a team uh, one to eleven, and uh, this week we're going to take goalkeepers. Uh, we're going to each bring a goalkeeper uh, to the table, uh, plead our case for this particular goalkeeper, and um, then we're going to put a poll on Twitter, and yeah, the viewers uh, will will decide who fills the in this case the the number one jersey. And uh, each week we will bring a different position, and uh, we'll we'll start with you, Chris. Who's your keeper? Would you, you'd like to bring? Okay, do you want to do you want to flash him up, Daz? There he is. Edwin van der Sar. So I picked Edwin van der Sar because, well, because the other two stole my one, but we'll forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, do you know what? Edwin van der Sar, fantastic goalkeeper. And do you know what? I remember a good number of years ago when Fulham managed to get him, and he, that was his first Premier League team, Fulham. And he was a class actor, Fulham. And then obviously Sir Alex Ferguson, I know, you know, I don't want to slag save Alex Ferguson off here by any means, but, you know, one one area where I think over the years he struggled to find, you know, a real top, top keeper. I think he had Fabian Barthez for a bit and then he had Massimo Taibi. It was that little period where he was struggling to replace Schmeichel and then he brought in Edwin van der Sar and no surprise, the trophies followed. So I'm a massive fan of Edwin van der Sar. Fantastic, uh, you know, goalkeeper for Holland and for Man United. And I believe, you know, he he, he had, uh, I couldn't tell you how many trophies he won, but I know it was a lot. And just, just a, an all, you know, an all-round good guy and a top pro. And I believe he's now working with Ajax. So he's back in his homeland yes. in, in Holland. And, you know, he's, he's now working with Ajax. And, yeah, I, I think it would be wrong not to bring his name to the table. So I picked Edwin van der Sar. Okay. okay, I'm going to go next, and I'm going to bring to the table a chap you just mentioned, actually, Chris, Peter Schmeichel. And uh, I'm going to go to my notes for Peter Schmeichel. Yeah, I uh, played for Bromby, Man United, Sporting Lisbon, Villa, uh, Man City. Got 292 caps for, for Man United. Uh, was signed for 0 0.5 million, a b bargain of the century, according to, to Alex Ferguson. Uh, he's 129 caps for, for Denmark, uh, the, great, the great Dane. Uh, so we could call him. Um, yeah, uh, he's won throughout his career. Career, he won 24 trophies. That's amazing. Uh, he uh, with with uh, Man United, he won five Premier League titles, three FA Cups, one League Cup, and one Champions League. That includes a, a treble in there. Um, he's uh, the, the first keeper to score in, in, a goal in the in the Premier League when he was playing for Villa against Everton. Uh, his son Casper uh, is is the current keeper at Leicester and. Uh, what I'll always remember him for is it's not a good memory. It's uh, against playing against Newcastle in back in 1996, where he was absolutely like a brick wall or a force yeah. field or something yeah. like that. And that one nil uh, victory that that probably helped towards United win the league that 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 year. We don't we don't want to go there again. But uh, yeah, I bring Peter Schmeichel to, to the table. Okay, so I'm, I'll, I'll I'll take your two keepers and I will raise you a world legend. So my throw to the table is the one and the only Gianluigi Buffon. Oh, legend! Oh. So I think this is. Um, I, I think Daz, we can put the Twitter poll out, but I think you two boys are going to lose sadly. So <laughs> yeah, Buffon, yeah. age forty-three, current yeah. club Juventus, still playing in twenty twenty-one. Current clubs, Parma. He was at Juve after Parma for 17 years. He went to PSG and then back to Juve. So far in his career, he has one UEFA Cup, five Coppa Italias, 10 Serie A titles, one Serie B, seven Super Cups in Italy, three Champions League runners-up, 
and a World Cup and a league title in France with PSG and a Champions Trophy. So I don't think there is anything other that we can say other than Buffon is really the only keeper that should be in the World Eleven in the number one slot. There is nobody better. I feel, I feel, I feel sorry. It? I feel sorry for Edwin van der Sar. I've sold him shorts here, haven't I? And he, and he, <laughs> yeah. he said, yeah. sorry, Edwin. I, I, Edwin. I, I, sorry, mate. I did, absolutely, I did absolutely no work this afternoon, but researched Gianluigi <laughs> Buffon. <laughs> Phil, if you, were throwing, if you were throwing a keeper in, Phil, who would you throw in, lad? Uh, on the spot, so I think we'll go for a, a current keeper in the Premier League. So um, I'd say I'd go for the Liverpool keeper, Alice, and I think in this day and age, you need a sweeper keeper, and I think he's, he's top-notch. And I think last season... Obviously, before the season got curtailed, when when uh, when Allison was out and they had that other probably what we'd call them in Scotland would be a Diddy keeper, which is a uh, which is Adrian. You saw a massive difference um, yeah. in quality and also the difference uh, the difference a goalkeeper can actually make um, on a football team is massive as well. So yeah. I'd go, I think, for a couple I think, yeah. I'd go, I'd go Allison, but again. Yeah. Going through the history books, I, I couldn't argue against Buffon. He's obviously an Italian legend and a legend of world football. I don't see what keepers out there can really compete with that yeah, record. No, that got. I agree fully, absolutely. But uh, could could Buffon do it in a wet night night in East uh, Fife? That's the question. <laughs> absolutely not. I think he'd have a <laughs> wait, wait. Maybe maybe with a with a can of Iron Brew, he probably could. Yeah, uh, I think for me the thing. I think the thing with Buffon for me is like to still be playing at 43, like yeah. the other keepers we're talking about are retired. This guy is still playing. And I think that to me, you know, to be in that prime of fitness, still playing at a, you know, it's not like he's playing lower league. He's playing for Juventus. So it's, it's just, it's absolutely board, crazy, you know, crazy. But yeah, look, that's, yeah. that's the three keepers that have, that have gone to the mix. So Daz, we're going to do what? We're going to put that up yeah, on we'll Twitter? Put it up on Twitter and uh, as a poll, and then you, you get to log into our, to our Twitter page, give us a follow as well while you're in there, and just uh, just select which one you, you want to pick. Now, I must point out, Martin got first pick this week. That won't happen next week. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and that, that, that is uh, loaded 11. So uh, okay. I think we, we'll, we'll move on. And uh, we're, we're kind of getting towards the, the end of the show now. So maybe we'll just tell you about what, what's loading for us next week. And Martin, you want to give us a, a talk, run us through what's happening next week? Yeah, absolutely. So next week, we've obviously got, uh, we're back on next Wednesday, 10th of February, same time, nine o'clock. We'll have whole loaded headlines. We'll have the update on loaded leaderboard when you see me go back to the top. We'll have loaded <laughs> tune. Um, and uh, what are you laughing at? We'll have loaded tune next week, and our special guests are Moonlight Parade. So they'll be on with us next week. Um, I've got to email them probably this week and remind them, but they will be on with us next week um, with their tunes, um, and they will also go through loaded quiz. Loaded 11, then, we will follow up with, and I think we're looking at – what are we looking at next week, lads? Is it a left back or right back, or where are we going? I think we'll go left back. Left back. Left okay. Back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Andy, yeah. Robertson. Andy Robertson. Yeah. Well, that's a good call. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is pretty much next week. Um, follow us on Twitter at Loaded Football. You can subscribe to Loaded Football on YouTube. So get on it. Get subscribed. And if you like what we're doing, if you love the tune by Phil, and you want to hear quality music coming through over the next few weeks then listen, it's free to subscribe. Get on it. Watch us on a Wednesday night. Um, watch us on repeat. Watch us in the bath. Watch us while you're in the jacks, doing whatever. But get on it and watch us. So for me, that's really it. I would obviously be the first to say good night. Um, I'd personally like to thank Phil. Um, certainly over the last week or so when we were bouncing emails backwards and forwards, absolutely delighted to have you on. Love the tune. I wish you all the very best of success. Um, and as you're releasing more stuff and things open up, um, listen, keep in touch with us, and we'd love to have yeah. you back on it sometime, Phil. So, Definitely. yeah. So, I think in the next, I'm planning the next two, three months to release another, another single, a follow up single, and then hopefully an EP um, at the end really? of the year. But I just obviously say to all the all the viewers if they like, you know, the session, then get yourself on uh, on social media yeah. pages and also the streaming platforms. So, whatever you're on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, I'm easy to find. PG Charletta, just as it says at the bottom of the screen. 
um, yeah, get, get streaming this session will get stuck in your head. I can I can promise you that. So yeah. um, again, thank you very much for uh, letting me on the show. It's been a, it's no. been a, a I, I, absolutely our, our, our pleasure, mate. So listen for me. That's me for tonight. So over to the other two boys as we sign out. So I'll just jump in there. I just wanted to say, Phil, as Martin's just said, thank you very much for coming on, mate. It's a pleasure to meet you. Really enjoyed doing your, your, uh, your Scottish East Fife quiz. It was really good, mate. <laughs> and yeah, I wish you all the very best. And I do I do hope you come back on. The final thing I just wanted to say, lads, is just uh, that we've now got full times in the Premier League. So the full time result at Villa Park was West Ham beat Aston Villa 3-1 away from home. And Jesse Lingard scored a brace on his debut. So... That was a that was a really good result for for West Ham, and the big shock of the night is we can now confirm that Brighton have beaten Liverpool at Anfield one nil. Wow! Woo. So that's 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 a massive result for Brighton and yeah. a real uh, a real dent in Liverpool's title challenge yeah. for this season. City's league to lose, lads. City's absolutely, to absolutely. So Daz, I'm going to pass to you, mate. Yeah, I I just like to say thank thank Phil for for coming on and and uh, letting us play his tune and uh, I know that 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 quiz has killed you and but you you'll be back you'll be back when you have that new tune out <laughs> yeah. to to, yeah. to, uh, to top of that that leaderboard. But uh, just like thanks thank the lads and thanks everyone for watching and and uh, for the questions everyone and um, I I think it's time for uh, another blast of of Phil's tune and Phil would you like to to uh, introduce it this time? Yeah, I will do so. Again, this is my, my debut single, The Sesh, um, released in August time. Again, it's a song that you can can all relate to. It's one that you can get stuck in your head. So hopefully you'll enjoy it and you can add it onto your playlist on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, you name it. And you're just going to give myself a wee follow on the platforms as well. So this is uh, this is The Sesh. Good stuff. Cheers, Phil. Take care, everybody. Yes, Phil. Take, Take care, care everybody. Good night. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.